This is a video I probably shouldn't be making, but I'm going to put it out there. And unlike some people, I'm going to put my face to it. You know, everybody's entitled to their opinions. There's a couple guys been commenting, which is fine. They're entitled to their opinions. They're entitled to, which I have no problem. But when somebody comments something, to think that they're right, or they have the right to say what they are, when they don't know the whole story. I have put a lot of stuff out here, probably that I shouldn't put. The reason I made a lot of these videos is to share my experiences so people can maybe see that they're making the same mistakes and maybe help avoid it. I don't need somebody coming on here and telling me I'm a poor manager, that my place is a dump. You're not telling me anything I don't know. Nothing I haven't said on these videos before. I know I'm an asshole. I know I'm incompetent. I know I'm a poor manager. I've had other people tell me that I'm a piss poor manager. Closer than you. I've had people tell me they thought they were, I've been an asshole for the last 40 years. Yet, I'm still talking to them and stuff. I mean, like I say, you're not telling me anything I don't know. Now, you might be able, you're boasting yourself, one of you, that you're a first-generation farmer and that you learn from the best dairymen. Well, that's fine. And people say that, I don't think he said it, but the other comments have come up in videos that the farm was given to him. I earned everything from scratch. No, you haven't. You didn't go to a bank, get a loan, start up, Pay everything off and have everything that you got doing it all yourself. I didn't. Yeah, I never, I didn't buy the farm. My grandfather did. Passed it to my dad. When my dad died, my mom inherited it. And at that time, I still had to pay all the bills to the house. I have three brothers that were still in school. Two of them might have been in school. One might have been out in college already. But no, I think they were all four, all three, all four of us were graduated. But anyway, I still had to pay all the taxes, all the insurances, all the utilities at the house, supporting my mom, even though she had a job. I still had to put money into the place. When she died, yeah, I inherited the farm with my three brothers. The farm where I'm at right now, where the milk barn is, my mom didn't even own that. My two uncles did. My dad and my two uncles owned this farm. When my dad died, my uncles. It was in their name. Well, they're at the age where they needed to get it out of their name in case they went to a home and all that stuff. Yeah, they signed the farm over to us for a dollar. So, yeah, people build farms different ways. As far as the milking, the cows, and the equipment, that's all mine. My brothers have nothing to do with any of that. And everything I got, yeah, I built for it. Yeah, it's a shitty mess. It's... Cows do look bad, but like I say, you don't know the whole story, what's going on. And you say you're successful, you didn't do it all yourself. You have a nutritionist that comes in, and you rubber stamp pretty much probably everything he says. You have an agronomist come in, and you'll rubber stamp everything he says. You'll have the vet come in, you need to do this vaccine program, and then, oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you might not, and you might, but you're following all their advice. You're not making a decision on your own. You go to the bank, the bankers fills out your, your paperwork. Yeah, okay, yeah, we can do that. You sign that loan or whatever. Yeah, maybe you're lucky enough you don't need to get a loan. And like I said before, I know you, I'm pretty sure you just started here in the last month watching. Probably when I changed my name to Mad Farmer, that's probably when it came up somewhere for you, and that's when you started following. So you don't know all the other videos I've made in the last two years explaining all this. Yeah, I made some piss poor judgments. I ran up credit cards because I still had the mentality that, oh, next year will be better. Next year will be better. And I've come to the realization it's not. Nothing is going to get better. This whole country is going to get worse. And you are going to find out. My generation, I, it was... Barely remember it, but I remember the 80s when the farm crisis was. And I remember how farmers grouped together, how they support each other. Now, I'm not coming on here asking anybody for money. I'm just sharing my experiences. I'm hoping somebody can give me some guidance somewhere. 
And unlike you, my generation, if you go back and read the comments, and anybody wants to read some of these comments, I'm referring to in the last video. You can go back and read what was said. If he's man enough to leave it up, he might get embarrassed enough and take it down. I don't know. But my generation, if you read comments, yeah, I had the same thing. We did this and we did that. They put an idea out there. They give some guidance. They give some suggestions. Or maybe you should check this. Maybe you should check that. Your generation, and it's not just agriculture. It's your generation, because I know you're a millennial if you're a first-generation farmer. Your generation just cuts everybody down. You're so much better than everybody else. And you're not going to get ahead that way. And it's your generation. Now, this is just my opinion, what I've been observing. And if anybody is actually paying attention to what's going on in this world, agriculture is going to crash. They are trying to eliminate agriculture to control the food. There is no doubt about it. And it's not, you can say whoever you want. It's the Chinese. It's Charles Schwab with the World Health or, or World WEF, whatever it is. You know, even our own government. They're pushing this printing meats. They got imitation chicken, imitation milk. Now there's imitation eggs coming out. They are trying to ruin agriculture. And once they do that, probably in about the next 10 years, they're going to realize, oh, no, that was all bad. We got to start agricultural up again because it was healthier. Now, nobody's going to be afford to get in it or nobody that had it. They're trying to consult everything down into big farms so it's easier to control. That didn't work in Russia back in the 20s and the 40s, and it ain't going to work now. But, yeah, you have, you just think you're so much better or right, and it ain't going to work. Now, and a part of that reason why you're going to crash agriculture, and I've had this comment made me before, that what a problem do I have with technology? Well, the problem I have with technology is what's happening right now, where you're making yourself obsolete. Do you really think that putting auto steer in a tractor, GPS, and all this other crap that they're doing out there now is for your benefit? All you're doing is putting the infrastructure in for them to do what they want to do. Why else are they making autonomous tractors? You're going to have the places all mapped out for them. You're going to have all the equipment bought in place. They can just come in and do it. And you might think I'm crazy, conspiracy theory, whatever. I don't care. But that's what I see what's going to happen. Now, like I say, you don't know everything that goes on here, yet you want to be judgmental about it or put your judgment on. That's fine. But... You're not helping anybody. Now, like I say, back in the 80s, farmers were helping farmers. They had, you know, anybody remembers farm aid and all that. Now, like I say, nobody has the time of day for the next person. And I, and I said, I'm not on here asking anybody for money. Unlike your generation that puts up a million-dollar bin site and have it so inoperable and unsafe that they want to sell jars of dirt to help fund fixing the damn thing. That's sad there. And just the vanity, and I'm saying it's, it's everywhere. And I'm talking from the agricultural point because that's what I see. The vanity, the egos out there nowadays, thinking that they're better, they're doing better. You know, you're not helping anybody. Now, the other guy, he's half and half. He's made some decent comments, but he's on here being a dick. Too. And he knows it. I even told him before. We laughed about it. You know, kind of half-hearted thing going back and forth. But I'm not the only one he does it to, so I know the type of person he is. And I'd say the comment he made that I'm the original troll. I don't know what made me original, whether I wasn't the first one to do anything. And I'm no different than anybody else. Like I say, I've been bullied. I've been a bully. I've trolled. I'm being trolled here now. Like I say, it's stuff you got to grow up with. I'm not going to go to my safe space and cry about it. I'm not going to get pissed off and cancel somebody. I mean, like I say, I won't, I'm not going to delete no, them comments or any comments, really, because everybody has the right to what they want to say. And if you're so proud of what you said, 
I'm fine for leaving it up so everybody can see and hear it. Now, there would there could be a point you want to get too belligerent, too pissy about something, foul mouths, threats. Oh, foul mouths don't bother me either. But more threats. Or you want it would there's always a point where it goes too far, and you might get blocked or whatever. But like I say, I'm fine with your opinions. But you like I say. Everybody needs help at some point, whether it's money or guidance. Even my dad. The house we live in, uh, my uncles actually paid for it. We were losing the house. Not because we owned it, it's because we didn't own it. My dad was renting it at the time. And the landlord didn't pay the taxes on the property. So it went up for sheriff's sale. And you have to have cash money when you go to a sheriff's sale or have the money available. You can't finance or anything. So my uncles, we were actually going to move into this house in front of the barn. We were actually building on to that. And this is back in the early 80s. But then my uncles were, were able to help. They, act, they actually lost it at the sheriff's sale, but they were actually able to buy it off the guy that bought it because he was just buying up land for gas wells at the time. So like I say, family helps, helps family. It, other people help anybody. Because like I say, you're not, you didn't build it from scratch. I guarantee that. I know that. You may have had guys help you, give you guidance. You may have worked on somebody's farm and built up equity. You could have started out, I'm assuming you were in FFA, 4-H or something, had one or two calves one year. By the time you were out of 4-H, you had a herd of 20 that you were either able to start up with or be able to sell to finance another venture. Who knows? But everybody builds different. Everybody has different theories. I have no use for the technology that's out there. And like I, said, like I said before, it's going to crash agriculture, these robotic milkers. You don't need to know what you're doing by the time they get in there. All they need is somebody that can run that computer. Somebody, labor, illegal immigrants that have no skills or nothing else to do the manual work. You know, that's, a, that's all it is. They want people that can control it. So... And you want to think it's bad. You want to act like it's bad that I filed bankruptcy. There's nothing wrong with filed bankruptcy. Depends which bankruptcy you file. If you want to file Chapter 7, then, yeah, everything gets dismissed. I'm in Chapter 13. And I'm sure you're smart enough to know all this. You know everything else. But Chapter 13, you still have to pay everything back. It just freezes them adding any more interest on it. And it's a tool to help you get out of debt and get ahead. You know, how many companies out there have filed bankruptcy? Big billionaire companies. Bankruptcy protection. You know, so it's just a tool. Whether I can get out of it or not, probably not. Am I at risk of losing everything? Even the way the property's set up, I don't know if the property's going to be protected because I don't own the property either. Should have mentioned that before. Me and my three brothers own the property. All I, I own 25% of the land. I own all the cows and equipment. So yeah, I'm at risk of losing all the cows and the equipment. Property-wise, I, I doubt that it protects it. But uh, my debt load is not that significant. It's plenty, but it's not that significant that most of the cows and equipment wouldn't cover it. But like I say, it's a tool to get you out of debt, help you. And if you had followed along there before, I tried other options, debt consolidation, which is a scam in my opinion. They will help you, but they don't tell you all the information you need to know. What actually does happen in the end, because you still don't get out of all of it. They pay off part of it, and then you end up claiming what was forgiven as income and have to pay taxes on that yet. So like I say, if you don't know what you're talking about, you really shouldn't be commenting about it. Now.
Now, most of what I'm saying is not specifically directed to these guys because it happens on all these channels and I see it all the time. And this is to them, but to everybody thinks that they're better than somebody else. And they say, if you have a problem with it, don't watch it. You know, I've been doing this, you know, from helping my dad, I've been doing this for 40 years. And I still don't know everything. I'm glad you have an infrastructure in your area with your vet, a nutritionist, agronomist. The experts around here, and it's not just agriculture too, it's all industries nowadays, everybody's just for money. I say I've had four different nutritionists in here in the last five years. Nobody can make a positive turnaround. Everything keeps going down. Talk to the vets. They can't make a difference. There is something here causing a problem. And I've been through this all before for feed, stray voltage, water. I've been through all this. I got videos out there, everything I've done. And the last couple of years, the weather's been a bitch. Poor quality feed. Yes, I know it. But I don't think it's to the point where it would be causing this much of a negative effect. But, like I say, the experts I got, I could show you in there with the free stalls. Can't get anybody to give me any answers. So I found literature through Penn State. The one row I put in, based on their dimensions. And the nutritionist I was working at the time told me that they're... Dimensions are bigger now because cows are bigger nowadays. So the other two rows, I changed them to dimensions. The side I put in, yeah, they should have been bigger. But I have a lot of jersey, so I figured it's fine. I was going to put the one row bigger than the other two rows anyhow, instead of doing the two rows. But by his dimensions, I should have been six inches shorter, and they should have been lower, and things would be better in there too. But what are you going to do? They're the expert. I listen to them. But like I say, if you have a problem with what I'm doing or how I'm doing it, don't watch it. It's fine. I don't watch basketball because I have no care for it. I don't watch soccer. I quit watching NASCAR with the way they've turned around here in the last couple of years. I don't like the way they've become. There's nobody in NASCAR to root for anymore. Well, there's a few, but they've made that too, too political anymore, too correct. I mean, I don't even watch football. I have no care for it. I have all the sports. That's why I do watch the most. And, you know, what little interest I have in it is because I have a cousin that plays in the NFL for the Bears. And I probably even shouldn't mention that because with all the cancel culture out there, you're not allowed to claim things nowadays. But, you know, you wouldn't know who he was anyhow. We don't look anywhere near alike. And so, but, you know, there's, everybody has their opinions on things, but if you don't like it, do something else. I mean, like I said, I've tried different things and can't get a positive response, know how, and yeah, I'm probably going to fail. So what's the big deal? What, why, do you, why would you care if I fail? You know, you have no interest in help. So why bash somebody down? And like I say, that's clearly, you can see the difference in generations if you read these comments. And the guys that do give some positive feedback, I mean, like I said, I don't need my ass kissed each year either. I don't need sunshine blowing up my ass. Approval from anybody. But yeah, it's kind of nice to get that pat on the back or the, 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 say the compassion that somebody else has an interest or cares that there is a positive outcome other for other than themselves anymore. There's still a chance something might change around here. Yeah, I got, who knows, maybe I'll get a rich relative that dies. Maybe somebody else will leave money somehow. Maybe I can dig myself out of this. Because that's the only way it's going to happen is money. And that's the problem. They're, the cash flow ain't there to do it anymore. It wouldn't take much to improve the cash flow, but when nothing works, you know, and you're like, say, you're probably one of these guys that jumps on anything 
That's why I quit watching some of these channels on here because they'll be in shills for anything. You know, they'll, they'll fall for anybody's, well, if you do this, it only costs you two cents a day per cow, but you'll see a five cent return. That never happens. All this with the corn planters nowadays for the picket fence rows and being able to go nine mile an hour. They're making all the same claims now for this stuff that they did 10 years ago for the attachments that they're taking off the planters now, saying they'll get the same returns, which they never do. 10 years ago, you would see 220 to 240 bushels, most guys that are really working it. Maybe every once in a while I'll see a 270. You look at all these channels out there now. It's the same yields, 220 to 240. You're not getting any more. They might get that 270. Every once in a while they might see a 300. But overall, they're averaging about the same now that they did 10 years ago. And all you're doing is making somebody else rich because you want to be stroke your eagle that I got the high-speed seed tubes and I got this and I got the GPS and I don't need to have a marker anymore or foam markers. Like I say, it's all going to come crashing down. And at least I got a chance of bankruptcy. What's coming, you ain't going to save it with bankruptcy. Because as if you follow anything that they're saying out there and everything they keep saying seems to be coming true. And they, they have said by 2030, you're not going to own nothing and you're going to enjoy it. So that is their plan to take everything away from you. And they say, you're putting the infrastructure in place for them to do it. So, I say, probably didn't say everything I wanted to say. Probably said more than I should have, but I've said too much here now. So, hope some of this thinks, sinks in. Because, like I say, you don't need to be a dick about everything. Because not one comment you have said, and like I said, I don't need sunshine blowing up my ass. But not one comment you have said has any inkling of anything positive. It's all been 100% negative. And... They say, I don't need negativity in my life either. I got enough of it on my own, from my own doing. And they say, you're not telling me anything I haven't said or that I don't know. So, But I'm going to leave that there. And so, thanks for watching. And there'll be a few more videos. I got some other stuff to say about some of the other things going on in agriculture. And I just got to figure out how I want to say it. So we'll catch up with you all later.